first New York, then Texas, and now on Monday, August 12th, Los Angeles was hit with an earthquake of about 4.4 magnitude. The quake was felt from San Francisco to Tijuana, Mexico, and people are advised to prepare for more aftershocks. God in this hour is revealing himself to the people who are vigilant and aware of the signs occurring across the globe. And within the next 12 minutes, if you will pay attention to these words with an alert mind, you will realize that God is about to do something very huge and shocking. Everything is shaking, whether you talk about humans or demons. By the almighty move of God, no one is untouched. The natural world reflects the spiritual battle that is intensifying every day. The earth groans under the weight of sin, and these quakes are not just a random occurrence, but are orchestrated by the hand of God to wake up a slumbering world. As it is written in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 26 to 27, it says, at that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Here in this verse, the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. God is shaking the foundations of the earth to reveal what is unshakable, which is His eternal kingdom. In the past few days, God has appeared to many people, including those who are struggling to believe in Him, but are drawn toward His kingdom. They are battling their own doubts with their minds, resisting the truth of the one and only true God, who is her Father in heaven. These divine visitations are a testament to God's relentless pursuit of souls. Some are claiming that they saw Jesus Christ in the clouds, while other reports seeing him in dreams. These encounters are not just isolated incidents, but are a part of a larger outpouring of God's Spirit in these last days. As prophesied in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 which says, And afterward I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. We are living in the fulfillment of these words, dear child of God, because as the Lord is making himself known to both believers and unbelievers alike. Not just about Jesus Christ, but several people in the last few weeks have claimed to be visited by the angels of heaven. These messengers of God are bringing warnings, guidance, and comfort to those who will listen. They come to prepare the way for the return of our Lord, reminding us that time is short. Divine visitations are happening, and if we are still in doubt about where Jesus Christ is among the increasing chaos in the world, you must change your perception now. Jesus is boldly proclaiming his presence. He is divinely calling out to humanity. But unfortunately, people are still choosing to ignore his signs. We can see the increase in the numbers of blasphemous people in the world, those who mock God even after listening to the testimonies of many others. 
the rise in wickedness is a clear indication that we are in the last days. As foretold in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, where it says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Look at the events that took place at the Paris Olympics. The blatant mockery of Christ during the opening ceremony, where sacred images and symbols were discredited, is a sign that the world is growing increasingly bold in its rebellion against God. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man rapes what he sows. So all those who mock the Almighty, thinking they can escape judgment, are gravely mistaken. The signs are all in front of us, but all we need is an alert mind to understand the meaning of these signs and the importance of the time we are left with. The shaking we see is not just a physical phenomena, but it is a spiritual one, reflecting the turmoil in the hearts of men and the spiritual warfare raging in the heavenly realms. Let our hearts be moved to seek the Lord with all our might. Let us not be like those who scoff and say, Where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. Instead, let us recognize that these are the birth pains of the new world that God is bringing forth. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 2 says, The Lord is with you when you are with Him. If you seek Him, He will be found by you. But if you forsake Him, He will forsake you. You might have some things in life that are most important to you. So you put them on your priority list. That list might be filled up with almost all the earthly things, the material pleasures, the temporary pleasures. But does it contain the name that is above all name? The name of Jesus Christ? And even if the name is included there, then is it still on the top? Look, God always seeks earth time and earth love. And therefore, it is a responsibility that we must commit ourselves to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. You must surrender yourselves to be away from sin and to lead a holy life. If you really want to see Jesus Christ, if you really want to find Him, then you cannot live an unholy life according to your unholy wishes or desires. Remember, the Lord loves sinners, but He hates the sin. And that is why as long as we are carrying the weight of our sins on our shoulders, the Lord cannot dwell into us. Therefore, seek the Lord as early as possible before the evil forces makes it impossible for you to seek the glory of His light. And as we see these signs occurring and increasing in frequency and intensity, let us not be overwhelmed with fear but rather be filled with anticipation and readiness. But Jesus himself said in Matthew 24 verse 6 to 8, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that 
you are not allowed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these places are beginning of the birth pains. The quakes are a reminder that we are living in a time of great transition. The kingdom of God is at hand, and we must be ready for the return of our king. The shaking is not just a sign of judgment, but also of God's mercy, giving us one last chance to turn to him before the final trumpet sound. So let us heed the warnings we are getting. Let us prepare our hearts. Let us spread the message of hope and salvation to a world that is desperately in need of it. The time is short. The signs are clear. And the call is urgent. So let us be vigilant. Let us be faithful. And let us be ready. For the Lord is coming soon. For now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Creator of heaven and earth, the one who holds all power and authority, we come before you in humble reverence and awe today. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the Almighty, the one who shakes the earth and the heavens, who speaks and all creation trembles at your voice. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. We exalt your holy name and declare that there is none like you, O Lord. Father, we come before you today, shaken not only by the events we see around us, but by the recognition of your mighty hand at work in the world. We thank you for the signs and wonders you are revealing to us. For the earthquakes that remind us of the spiritual shaking taking place and for the divine visitations that are turning hearts back to you. We know that these events are not mere coincidences but they are the very manifestation of your word calling us to wake up, to repent and to return to you with all our hearts. Lord, we pray for those who are still in doubt who are struggling to believe in your truth and who are resisting the call of your spirit. We ask that you soften their hearts, open their eyes to see and their ears to hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. Let the scales fall from their eyes and let the light of your truth shine brightly in their hearts. Draw them to you, Lord, with the cords of loving kindness and break down every barrier that stands between them and your salvation. Father, we lift up those who have experienced these divine encounters, those who have seen visions of Jesus Christ, who have been visited by angels, and who have heard your voice in the midst of the chaos. Strengthen their faith, O Lord, and give them the boldness to testify of what they have seen and heard. Let their testimonies be a beacon of light to those around them, leading others to seek and find you. We pray that you would anoint them with your Holy Spirit, filling them with power, wisdom and courage to proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ to a world that is lost and perishing. Lord, we pray for the people that are experiencing these signs. New York, California, Los Angeles, and beyond. We ask that you would awaken the people of these lands to the reality of your presence, to the urgency of the hour, and to the need for repentance. Turn the hearts of the leaders, the influences, and the everyday citizens back to you. Let there be a great turning, a mighty revival that sweeps across these lands bringing multitudes into your kingdom. We also pray, Lord, for your church in these last days, 
Strengthen us, O God, to stand firm in the faith, to be unshakable in our trust in you, and to be vigilant in prayer and in sharing the gospel. Let us be a light in the darkness, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Fill us with your love, your compassion and your truth, that we may reach out to those who are lost, confused and searching for hope. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for your patience and for the opportunity to turn to you before it is too late. We pray that you would continue to reveal yourself to us, to guide us by your Spirit and to prepare us for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we look forward to the day when he will come in glory, when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.